But no, I had two of the profits, good effort. Mm -hmm. uh, had some, got some things done. Uh, good weather, good, good warm weather. It's gonna be warm down there. So uh, I've worked hard. Hope we get, get better, play better on Saturday. Question. What's the thought on the game Saturday in terms of being able to go down there? Because we're starting to hear people talk about potential cancellations with the storm being what it is. Any talk on that? I don't think it will be. We 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 went through every scenario known to man, and we'll figure it out here when it gets there. And we'll fly down when they tell us to fly down, and play when they tell us to play. I mean, I don't. I ain't gonna matter. It looks like it, uh, I think now we should be okay, but we'll wait. I mean, you'll never know those things, and hope. Pray to God that every. I wish everything would stay in the ocean and no one to get touched because that looks like a pretty nasty storm to me. I hope the people. I don't know what, how Haiti and. Bahamas good. Did that end up being pretty nasty? Or no, it looks really bad. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. yeah I, mean, I haven't even heard. That's a shame. That's a shame. We got some people who have family in those areas. You guys uh, typically travel on Thursdays. Is that still the plan? Yeah, it is. I mean, it is till, until some continue. You know, we get all the final updates when we got to do it. From a health standpoint, how are you guys? Derek Pretty Naughty's healthy. ankle. We're about to have healthy. I'm sorry. Derek Naughty's ankle. Yeah, he practiced like that, all day. Did great. I mean, he was full speed going today. He was good. He got normal nicks and bruises, but ain't nothing major. We, we should be pretty healthy. I asked you a little bit yesterday about Dalvin as a receiver. How did he have to learn? Or did it? Did, it, did he have to learn it? Did it come naturally? To be, to no, be able I to mean, catch? he learns the game. He studies the game and understands how to run around. Not just, but he could always catch the ball very well. But then how to get open and how to set in the zone and how to work a man coverage guy, inside leverage, outside leverage, or how to set a guy up. He worked at the game. And, he, you know, Dalvin likes the game. I mean, it's not just a guy who comes to play. He likes to, excuse me, watch film and study and do all the things he's got to do. So. And he picked up pretty naturally. For a guy who's that good at, at what he already did, for him to say, you know, I can I can get good at this too, is that uncommon for a guy who no, this No, I don't. Not not a guy that's a true competitor that really understands the game because he knows for his future that that is the, one of the future of this team. It helps our team that we can get him the ball in different ways to, to utilize him. And plus, it, you know, at the next level, uh, that value is due to root. And, you know, he, that's what he's always working. Sure, when he's one on one with a linebacker, he gets that right matchup in the flat. I mean, his eyes probably open up. As oh, they do. I mean, you know. I mean, now I ain't got to. I ain't got to run through four big linemen. And I got in space, and I just got to catch it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, there's also an art to that because a lot of guys don't understand. I say this all the time. It's like running backs become receivers or receivers. How you you got to you want to play fast once you get the ball, but when you don't have it, you even got to play faster because that's how you get the separation to get it. And you know, guys got to learn that. He's done a good job of that. How valuable. <laughs> Dalvin's emergence as a receiver, the tight ends doing well. Uh, ben for a young guy like DeAndre. Oh, it, it's, it's critical but... because you got to lose all your weapons, and people can't double cover your main guys. And, and coverage wise, they say, okay, if we're doubling him, he will go inside. You know, hit that nice vertical to the tight end. You know, when they went outside and covered our hook and our flare, that he's reading through the progressions and things. And utilizing all your weapons allows people, you know, those people they can't concentrate. And then all of a sudden, our tight ends now are not just making plays, they're making big plays. Our backs are making big plays out of the backfield. So, you know, and then our receivers can catch it, you know. So it, it, it makes it a lot easier for those guys. And, and those guys developing around. That's what I keep saying. When those young quarterbacks, when those guys develop around you, they give you enough time to throw the ball and then they get where they got to be. And then you start to see those guys grow. And it's, it's, it's fun to watch. You, you look at the quarterbacks on, on both of these teams, really, and how big a role they've played in these recent Miami Coach State games. How important is it for DeAndre to get off to a quick start? And help well, I think it's always good to a quick start because, one, you set tempo of the game. You know what I'm saying? I thought he played really well the other day. He missed one third down throw. Missed that one to uh, uh, Travis out there in the flat we wish we'd have had. You know, but made a really nice one that we dropped, you know, for a big one there. So he, he started off pretty well hitting his throws and doing things. And for young guys, sometimes that can be a challenge. You know, but I think for our team, he, he needs to start fast, but he's learning to do that, and I think he does it here in practice. Bob was putting up some, quietly, some really nice numbers. What is what is he doing particularly well right well, now? Well, I mean, he's being where he's supposed to be, running the routes he's supposed to run, and he's still growing. There's still a lot of growth in, in you know, where he can be and what he's doing, but, you know, we're getting the ball, and the reads and the progressions are going that way, and DeAndre seeing them and making the plays. How's Ricky kicked the past couple of days? Kicked pretty well. Kicked really well yesterday, kicked good today. Kicked good today. Hit the ball good and square, not you know, not moving. And even if he, you know, the balls were solid and, and hitting, you know, not tailing like we did the other day. He got his foot. His foot was just too close to the ball. You know, like he was too close and had his toe turned. So when he kicked, he had to come across it. That was making him. And it was he had never done it. Didn't do it on the PATs. Just just on those field goals. Where you got to look at it, and fix it. Jim, how much do you guys really miss? You know, guys like Nile and Brutus and. and Reggie and Terrence from from that defense, the seniors. That really well, you, the you miss guys the experience and make calls, and you know even you know just like I said, those young linebackers now they got to make a call and do that. But it, it's a progression you got to have. But you miss guys all the time. They're going to graduate, but those guys are very vital guys. Have been around and played a lot of football, and you know, not always you never noticed them always making super plays. But they made a lot of plays, but they were such glue guys and did little jobs that you know spill balls to the right areas and just you know. Very disciplined in how they play. They, they were really good football players, really good college football players, and some of them are still playing football. I can imagine Derwin's probably being groomed to call plays all. all oh, he's season. already can. He already. Oh, he, he called, he's calling them then when he when he got hurt. How much? 
Is it overstated how much you guys miss just that aspect of his game? Well, I mean, Darwin, and I don't mean you, you miss, is a player, one of the best players I've ever been around. I mean, I mean that. I mean, he, he's a special guy. But his leadership and his command and his call, I mean, there is a lot to that. But, you know, guys, every team, you, you lose guys. I, that's not an excuse for anything. But you do miss that. I mean, that guy is a, he's a special cat. And, you know, when you got him, it's like when you had Jameis. You, you, you had a, there was a confidence there, too, that, you know, we got our guy, and, and you know, he made everybody else better. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, those other guys are learning. It's a great experience. We can fight through this and learn it and get those guys playing like they can play, and then you get him back, then you become that much better. It was two years ago at Miami that Rod made his debut. What do you remember about that decision and how oh, well God. he's been since then? I was nervous that week because I knew it needed to be done, and we probably needed to be done just a little bit before that, but just trying to get him at the right time. And it was it was you know almost one day where he's really ready, and we really needed to be ready. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Going on the road, making that debut, and it was, was critical in a, in a big game like that. And we got behind. It. He's had a lot of poise in the game. We had to throw the football and move it around, and end up running it good. And he played a really good game. But I, I remember agonizing up there, man. It was you want to do it, people. That's not as easy as you think because you know you you at that time we were undefeated. You know what I'm saying? And you were on it. You had a chance for a national championship and all that. And, you know you, you do that to develop and make. You know it could cost, one or two plays could cost you a game. And uh, but he did a great job. That was that was a big moment for him. A big moment for us. When both of them have been healthy, both he and Kareem have probably been your steadiest <laughs> two guys up on the line over the last few years. Just the stability that they've had together, how well they work together, and they, they communicate well together. They do a good job, and I think they feel comfortable beside each other. Goes back to Dalvin. He's done a good job picking up different aspects of the route tree. Does that show his football IQ? Yes, it does. He and he understands ball. I mean. He's a guy that you can explain. I, I I see where you're coming from. Even when you start and explain, it just start the picture starts coming on. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it does. He has he has a very good instinctual IQ of football. Because it seemed like in that opening game, you know, flat 20, 30 yards, the little swing passes, and you guys have done that more the past couple games too. We have. Well, I mean, it just it's been there and developed, and, and he's, he's we've made the reads to get him there. And, you know, it's funny. Early he was running too fast. You know, he was a little bit out of sync and in in making the run reads, but was really in the passing game. It was ironic how. But then he, now he's got his tempo back in the run game. We're really seeing things there too. So, uh, Travis had a couple of good games to start out the year. Past three still games. playing great. Okay. And I mean, he, I mean, he had a drop the other day. But as far as the way he's running, he was open. We tried to get in the ball seven or eight, times, two or three times. We could have got to him. We could have got to him or somebody else. He just happened to go to somebody else. Running routes, blocking his tail off. He ran, and he had a touchdown catch down there that we had a pressure on. If you remember, we about the 18 yard line going in South Florida. He ran a corner route over there. I'm talking about was open as could be, and we had pressure, and DeAndre had to scramble for about a three-yard game. Would have been a touchdown catch. Uh, he had one last week. The route he ran, even though he dropped that football, the route he ran and how he did it, I love how he's playing. He's playing fast. He's blocking. He's getting where he needs to be. He's getting open. You know, we, it just sometimes in the tree, just, or when he's gotten open, we've had pressure. You know what I'm saying? But And the numbers don't show it, but he's still playing. He's playing as good a football now, or maybe even better in a crazy way, if you can believe that or not, complete football than he even was the first part of the season. That's why I say numbers sometimes can be deceiving on how the ball got to get to your way things happen sometimes. Jim, I'm seen, very pleased. I'm sorry. Have you seen Matt Thomas kind of been a little bit more excited? He's going to get to go home and play in front of his you know, home crowd, I guess. I, I haven't noticed that part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but I mean, those guys will be excited to play. I know that. Since the since renovations to the stadium this year, do you think it'll play any different as far as. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, until I get down there, I've never been in it. I, I don't really know what all they've done there. They kind of put a little dome type thing. and. I, I'm not really sure all what what that'll do to we get down there. May I mean, may do something different. May keep some wind out or something. I remember we practiced old Dallas Cowboys thing. was a cotton bowl one year. That was neat. Kind of had that. I think that was even more so. I remember it had that little hole. We used to have the hole in the roof, and it was kind of kind of similar. We froze to death. Kind of similar, bigger, bigger hole on this. Yes, but I don't remember the Cowboys. We played during the cotton bowl. And it was about 35 degrees, and we was practicing. You had one set of sun right in the middle of it. Everything else was on the sideline, we froze. It was cold in that shade. It was shady and cold. That's all I can remember. We good? Thank you.